There it is. See? Yellow, man. Yellow is the optimum nozzle. See, this... Everyone's asking me for power wash lore. Guys, what you should be asking me for is power wash optimization tactics. And welcome to GT Not Live, where we're not live, uh, and that's evidenced by the fact that we just filmed three of these back-to-back because -back I have to fly out to Vegas for uh, a branded event that I'm going to, uh, which should be really exciting. Uh, sorry, I'm just uh, I'm updating my screen right now. I'm ruining the illusion that these are all being filmed on, on separate days, but this is actually being filmed on Monday of this week. Uh, all the episodes that you've seen this week have all been filmed on the same day, spoiler alert, uh, but midday Tuesday, uh, Steph and I have to fly out to Vegas. Uh, I'm hoping to see Omega Mart uh, this week uh, to kind of follow up on the food theory that we did this weekend. Um, we're going to an event that's uh, being hosted by a mobile game company um, uh, who hosts one of the biggest mobile games in the world uh, to, to experience it. Uh, it should be a pretty cool event. They're doing a big launch there, uh, which is really exciting. And you know, it's been a long time since we've gotten to actually go to any of these sorts of like big industry events to see other gamers, uh, to actually, you know, be able to talk to people, things like that. And so it's, it's nice to kind of have those things starting back up slowly. Um, so that way, you know, just achieving whatever senses of normalcy that we can get and fits in pockets here and there. Uh, but last time, uh, Matt and I kind of, uh, ended on a cliffhanger about my jeans. <laughs> apparently. Uh, so don't worry, today is going to be full of stories as Matt and I reminisce about all things life, randomness, what have you, uh, because we're, we're playing Power Wash Simulator. Power Wash Simulator. Uh, and I, a lot of you know what this is. A lot of you are aware of it, uh, largely because Markiplier has been playing it and it's, it, it's a game where you power wash things and you take your time and you zen out and it is, it is a try not to get satisfied style game because you're just doing chores in real life but unlike real life the chores get done and they stay perfect and it's amazing and you have complete and utter control over your surroundings and it just washes over you. Um, a lot of you have been asking me to look into the lore of this game I have been, just so you know, but, you know, there's, when you're looking into the lore of the game, you kind of got to play the game. So, I've been looking into it, I've been starting to do my research, however, I wanted to at least play one round of Power Wash Simulator on GT Live, just so, you know, we can get a sense of it, you guys can get a sense of it, um, and to kind of let you know that that is something I've heard from you overwhelmingly. Uh, Mark even called me out on that one, being like, Matt, are you going to do Power Wash Simulator lore? And I'm like, okay. So it's happening. It is happening, I think, uh, you know, hopefully here in a week or two. Um, but, and it's all coming together right now. But long story short, that is in the works. But today we're just going to play the game and talk about stories and how I didn't own jeans until I was in college. Uh, so let's just start up the game, hop into the power washing, and then we'll, we'll let it ride, friends. I feel like this is the, the perfect sort of game for just a day where we talk and share stories. Uh, I, okay. Hello, and thank you for joining us on our journey making Power Wash Simulator. Whilst we're no stranger to making games at Future Lab, this is our first early access title, and we can't wait to hear from you, so let us know about bugs. Great. Excellent. Uh, Lunar Lander, free mode. I want to do career mode. Oh, challenge mode, wash against the clock. No, I don't want to wash against the clock. That defeats the purpose of this game. It is not about speed running. It is about just existing in the world. So we're going to do, uh, career mode. We're going to clean the van and earn ourselves 150 bucks for our troubles. Harper, great news! Finally found a van for you at the auctions under your budget. Don't freak out when you see it. It looks like it's been dredged from the bottom of a lake, but that's a good thing. It meant no one else bid on it. They missed out. Underneath this hideous layer of gunk is your perfect workhorse. Engines, a dream, no rust. There's even equipment in the back. You just need a good hosing. It just needs a good hosing down, and you're in business. You'll certainly earn your pressure washing stripes getting this thing clean. Let's start this job, ladies and gentlemen. Clean the van. Look at all these details. $2 for the brake light. Wow. I appreciate the fact that the itemized list here is breaking it down by part. You know, so that way if I don't want to earn my $2 for the bonnet, I don't have to. And there it is. Beautiful. 
Let's start this puppy. Start the job. Select nozzle, select soap, select extension, show dirt. Oh, I can show the dirt by hitting tab. That's good to know. Sprint, stand to crouch. Okay. Switch nozzle, rotate equipment, toggle washer. Great. Oh, let's do this. Refill cleaning liquid. E-equip. Okay. We'll figure it out. So I can change my nozzles. What do I got? I've got my zero degree, which is straight on till morning, super powered, 15 degree, nice narrow fan. 25 degree provides a good balance between area of effect and pressure. 40 forms a wide fan at the expense of pressure. Uh, so I own a pressure washer. Uh, I spent all last summer pressure washing our new home here in North Carolina. Uh, it was, it had been kind of neglected for a long time. And so in North Carolina, it's very wet and uh, there's a lot of kind of like plant life that grows. And so, you know, the balconies and stuff are all kind of like, kind of gross. Oh, look at that. We're all kind of gross. And so it was one of those things where one of my first purchases was actually a power washer. And uh, it was one of those things where I then proceeded to spend like just full weekends pressure, wash pressure washing inch by inch, you know, bit by bit. And what I discovered was, and, and it comes with a, a subset of, a subset of different nozzles and so what I learned was that actually the the turbo nozzle was the best hands down no question um, but outside of the turbo nozzle uh, the the 15 degree or the yellow one actually this is almost identical to the pressure washing like system that we have with the green the the white the yellow um, that one was without question the the best of them. So I'm starting in on the, the yellow because the yellow is a good all purpose, got you wide enough, but also is able to kind of get you a little bit of progress without doing just a constant stream the whole time. So pants. So pants, Matt. Uh, what, what's, your, question, what's, your, what's your what's your question? My Matt? question is, um, what? <laughs> yeah, so for those of you who missed uh, the, the Pico Riddle School yesterday, uh, or earlier this week, because I'm assuming that one's going up first, right, Matt? Yep. Because it would, at this point, it wouldn't make a whole lot of sense for that one to come up afterward. That is true. Um, for those of you who missed that one, uh, we ended the stream on, you know, we were talking about what high school was like in the early 2000s, which is when, you know, when I was, ooh, when I was in school. And, okay, oh, there, look at that. You can see the dirt. That's helpful. You were in high school before low by... Little John came out. Yes. Yeah. I, I, I guess. Little John. You know, you're it's, asking. It's some... T Pain for sure. <laughs> it is T Pain for sure. Yes, I guess so. Oh uh, my God, it's not Little John. I'm stupid. I I don't know. It's Florida and T Pain. I apologize. You you I, know what? I was offended. No, so that I I feel bad. I really do. Do you really? Yes. Why? <laughs> I'm sorry. That, I mean that song is like everywhere. What 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 is the, sorry? What is the song? Apple that I, bottom jeans. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Yeah! Absolutely. You went okay. to school uh -huh. before that. I did. Uh huh. That's that true. That is insane. Uh -huh. That was more of a college song for me. I've my brain has only been functioning in a time where that song has been popular. <laughs> okay. Cool. Oh, I like, like that. I gained sentience with that song. Uh huh. Did you now? <laughs> okay. Well, that's good to know. Uh, <laughs> um. Yeah. So I mean, the thing was, I didn't like uh not looking my best or not looking, I don't know, not being dressed up. So I loved wearing, um, I loved wearing button down shirts, <laughs> which tells you a lot about me. And I did a bunch of like khaki pants. I just did khaki pants all the time. So you looked, you looked like a dad. I, I looked, yes. You're I looked wearing your church best. I, yes, every day I was wearing my church best with my button down Henleys and my button down shirts and things like, yeah, 100%. Huh. Yeah. Did that bode well? Did it bode well? I mean, what, for my coolness factor yeah. in high school? No, but I was also the kid who was, you know, going around and sitting at everyone's lunch tables <laughs> being like, hey, guys, I'm going to invade your space for a science you were, project. You were a nuisance. <laughs> I, I was, I, you know, I, was I, I wouldn't call myself a nuisance necessarily, but, you know, I was, I was determined to... I don't know, experience. I, I was, I was beat, marching to the beat of my own drum. How yeah, about that? That's for sure. Like, and I was unashamed to do it, right? Like I was, 
you know, living my best life. And, you know, people who liked me liked me and people who didn't didn't and I didn't really care. But, but like, I also kind of forced people to have to deal with me because, you know, I was president of drama club. I was president of choir. I was president and dance captain, one of the dance captains of the, of the show choir, right? And so that was just, you know, that was just me. I was very active and I, I loved school and I loved participating in school and, you know, I, and I did my thing and I had friends who liked to hang out with me or yeah. didn't. You just didn't wear jeans. No. So the, yeah. So the jeans thing was, yeah, I just about, never like, like gym. Well, I guess in gym class you change. Yeah. Gym class. I had shorts. I had gym. I, I had my gym shorts, gotcha. but I, 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 you know, I didn't really have the coolest shorts or anything. I had, that was big, like cargo cargo okay. shorts okay. that was also big i mean here's the thing right jeans in that era were like the big oversized junko jeans yeah so that was like the really big thing which i definitely wouldn't have well, wanted to wear anyway the thing about jeans is that they're not comfortable i like are they not ca- for, i find like like chino or khaki pants uh-huh much more comfortable as a casual pant uh-huh than a jean okay yeah do you? <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's a no. I mean, no, oh, because it's. I mean, jeans are the casual pant, right? A jean, <laughs> jeans are the casual pant. Yeah, no, they are. That that is what they are designed for, right? But and I was like, not. And I was not a casual sort of person, <laughs> right? Like that's that's the other thing that I would throw out there is like I was not a casual kid. Um, you know, I'm I, as as I am today, right? I was pretty intense, um, but I took things seriously, right? And if you know, if you were dealing with me, I made sure that you know you, you kind of got what you came for um but yeah no like i liked feeling professional and feeling like i was looking good and so i always just dressed up for things um if i could wear like a suit and tie i w- would have but that felt like too much um but that was just the type of person that i was and so when stephanie is like I, so between stephanie and my residence in college so i was an ra I was a resident assistant and you know one day my residents sophomore year along with Steph had like what they what was quite literally an intervention you know where they quite literally went through my closet item by item and said like what was and wasn't okay and it was devastating what it was what devastating didn't make the cut? not like I had like maybe three things that made the cut <laughs> Like, all my shirts were too big. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, and to be fair, again, like, oversized big shirts in that era, mm-hmm. you know, early 90s, like, that was more common than it is now. Like, now it's all about fitted, thin, things like that. But back then, like, that was a big thing. Um, but it was also one of those things where, like, the whole time I had th- So the things, my shirts were too big. All my pants were, you know, pleated dockers for the most part. I mean, for the most part, right? Like, yeah. pretty much, and, and pretty much all of them pleated dockers. And, and they're like, anything with a pleat is out. And I'm like, but that's all my pants. That's right. all these pants. And they're like, yeah. Did you choose the pleat? Like, you went to the store and I, specifically chose the pleated I, I, I chose, I, I chose, like, the, I didn't understand that there was another option like again like back then like pleated pants were standard right and when when you went to a a, a department store or what because that because that's the other i was shopping in macy's right i wasn't shopping in like you know i wasn't going to like abercrombie and stuff like that yeah not belk i was i was definitely at like dillard's level above belk no no belk why is belk i don't even we didn't have belk around us oh i think that's a southern thing belk is like mid-tier is mid-tier macy's i think is the highest we weren't we weren't macy's but also macy's wasn't really around us at the time we did jc pennies yeah we were pennies yeah we were Kohl's. we were pennies Kohl's. Mm -hmm. we were um yeah pennies Kohl's, dillard's were kind of like our go-to we have dillard's Oh, I don't have to hold down the button. I just click and spray. Oh, that's great. This game is delightful. This is great. I'm I'm kind of jealous. This is. I would like to play it. Oh, there's a there's a removals van outside my nightmare neighborhood neighbor's place. They're finally going. Whoever moves in there is going to need a quality pressure washer. Well, I've got it, bud. I'm there with a quality pressure washer right there. Uh, that looks pretty good. Oh no, don't miss that. I love that there's the spot the dirt finder because you see some of these surfaces and you're like, there's no way I'd be able to see that. I'm excited to explore the world of soaps and things. But yeah, so I mean, so to keep with that story, it was one of those things where 
you know, they they had this. Wait, 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 wait turn on it. There we go. It's a right click. Um, am I suddenly sprinting a bunch? There we go. Um, but yeah, it was. It, I I very distinctly remember. Like they they went through my whole closet bit by bit. I think there were three shirts that made the cut. There was maybe one pair of pants that were like questionable and everything else was in this like give away for your own sake pile kind of thing like you were not doing yourself any favors and that's it, kind of fun is that i mean what to do the i think so i think they were being good friends no they I, they were right yeah but it was also in like a way that was hurtful no it was it was definitely like because you i i never considered it mm. right like it's interesting. I never really cared about other people, but I did think I looked good, yeah. right? No one had ever said that I looked bad. Yeah, you were going for more of a dapper look. Yeah, and and I think and it, it's interesting, right? And I've said this too. Like since becoming a YouTuber, I've had to become cooler, right? Like my clothes have gotten cooler. Like I'm my. It, it's weird. I was at my most formal. It, it's a very strange evolution because I was at my most formal when I was in, like, middle school and high school, mm -hmm. right? College got me to start toning it down a little bit, and I got jeans and things like that. When I got a job, I was in a kind of a, a, a casual work environment, but I was still, like, wearing button-downs and stuff. And then as a YouTuber, you know, my outfits had to change a lot. Um, and so I got to kind of, like... I, so I got to take my aesthetic of I like to dress up and wear, you know cool looking clothing and, and especially jackets like I love uh, jackets and I got to transition it from like suit jackets to like fun leather jackets and things. Uh, you're going to go with that business name or do you need me to think some up? It's phenomenal or oh, I'm phenomenal. I thought up Grouting Thomas for that Tyler and she's never looked back. That's funny. So Harper's our bud. Um, but anyway uh, but yeah clothes clothes are an interesting thing and I remember like I, like I literally you know, after everyone was kind of, like, I played along with it, I laughed with everyone, but I, you know, I cried at the end of that night. Aww. You know, I mean, it was... That's so sad. It was, Sorry for bringing that up. Oh, no, it's... It, here, here's the thing, like, it was... I am better for it now, mm -hmm. right? Like, as as hard as it was in that moment yeah. to hear, I feel better now because I understand, like, I had never thought about it, and yeah. a lot of well, that must have been, like, blissful, like, really to not think about it. Well, it, blissful, but also, like, you know, there is a certain, you know, there is, it, just in life, right, there is, you have to take into consideration, to some extent, how the outside world perceives you. Yeah. Like, that is important. Mm -hmm. um, for for getting a job, for getting respect, for finding a part. Like, there is, there is some level of, like, outside not outside introspection i'm trying to think about like what it is but like outside awareness that you need and so like i was very confident in who i was as a person yeah um like i was marching to be my own drum i didn't i didn't really care right yeah but the and and i think what they helped me to realize was that my clothes weren't sending that positive message about myself mm -hmm. right um you know that people would dismiss me or not, you know, take me seriously or whatever because of the way I was dressing. Yeah. And so, like, I could still be the person I was, but, and, and still find ways to express myself, but in a more, in a, in a clothing palette that was, you know, more, more modern, more aware and, and smarter. Like, yeah. the way I was dressing myself wasn't smart. And it helped me to kind of, like, understand that. Um, and so for as difficult of a lesson as that was at the time, it was, it was a big kind of learning and growing moment. And so I'm glad that it happened. Um, a similar thing happened. Well, it, it's interesting. That was the clothing one. There was a similar one that happened in like a summer. So I went to a summer school in, Hey, there you go. New job available. Cleaning stuff. Is the this the extraordinary Dr. Power Wash? I got your details from my friend. I could really do with a hand at my place. Nice. Van looks fantastic. 
Told you it'd be fine under the grime. I've pinged you with $100 left over from what you gave me, so that should help get you off the ground. Also, just met my new neighbor over the fence, grumbling about his dirty backyard. Told him that you're gonna be available for business. So there you go. Oh, look at that. Oh, look, oh! Oh, that is so satisfying. Yes. That's beautiful. It's a beautiful thing. 100%. Well done. So, uh, okay. I guess we're on to mission two, but first, is there anything I could buy here, like, to make my process faster? That was really fast. I'm actually surprised at how fast that went. Um, ooh, there's different duties. Ha! <laughs> I said duties. Ha! <laughs> That's a word for poop. Uh, light duty, heavy duty, professional duty. Oh! Are they gonna re really make that much of a difference? I'm curious if it's just, like, spraying out to the masses or what the deal is there. Uh, what else we got? Cleaning liquids. Removing dirt from all glass surfaces. Do we need a clean... Again, like, we clean real fast. What do you think, Matt? Do we need liquid? I think we could clean faster. I know, but... does Oh, shoot, did I buy one? No, I didn't mean to... Did I buy it? I did not buy it. Okay. An equipment. What do we got? The turbo nozzle. A spinning zero-degree nozzle that increases the area of effect while maintaining... Max this, my friends, this is what actually became my best friend when I was cleaning in real life. So I am very familiar with this Prime Vista Turbo Nozzle, the spinner that has zero degree but also increases effect. Ooh, this one's $120, but it has the exact same description. Oh, but it's for a different power... Oh, see, that's how they get you. They microtransact you. You get the higher, the more expensive pressure washer, which requires the more expensive things when the normal pressure washer is working just fine. I think I do one more normally. There's a multi-purpose. This cleaner quickly removes dirt from many different surfaces. Wood, plastic, metal, glass, stone. See, that's too complicated. You know what? You know what? Forget it. I'm just going back to the simple joys of cleaning the back garden. Ooh, and I'll make 400 bucks out of it. It'll be perfect. Hey, Doc, I hope you like the challenge because I sure got the dirtiest backyard you've ever seen. Hey, keep how dirty your backyard is to yourself. I don't need to hear that. That's not me bragging, by the way. I had nothing to do with it. I just moved back into town for a bit to help my folks, who are both out of town for their, uh, both down to their last knee. Who are both down to their last knee. That's an odd way of putting it. <laughs> like, taking a knee? They only have one knee left between the four of them. They had four knees down there, down to one. Only one knee remains. Uh, and they rented what they thought was a really, or what I thought was a great place. Should have questioned why there weren't any garden picks in the end. They must have bred rhinos. Anyway, my girls are itching to get out here, and I don't want them still itching when they get back inside. Fair enough. Thanks. Thanks, Calvin. Let's do it. Um, are you ready? Are you strapped in for a nice prolonged... Ooh, hoo, hoo. Oh, yeah. A lot of small little details. Well, this doesn't look like it's too bad. When it said outside, I was getting a little bit worried, but this should be fine. But, um, okay, so where was I in my story, Matt? Uh, we talked about your your jeans intervention. Yeah, my jeans intervention Apparently in college. You had, you had a second intervention? Oh, the, yeah, so this was an earlier. So uh, my first girlfriend, uh, Fiona Perez. Whoa, full here. name. Yeah, Fiona Perez. That's he, he, Apparently my buddy wants to... That, oh, sorry, that's not me. That's in the... That oh. was in the game. That, no, my, my, my former girlfriend was not Fiona Perez. I was like, that's crazy that you're going to say her full name. Oh, yeah, I'm calling her out right here, right now. No, that was in the game. Sorry. I, I just, I was like, Do you want me to cut that out or like... Okay, yes, your girlfriend, Fiona Perez. Yeah, my girlfriend, Fiona Perez. No, um, so I did a bunch of summer schools uh, back when I was uh, in high school. I did summer school in college or at colleges. Um, I went to Northwestern University because there was a thing called the quality point system. So if I wanted to be uh, valedictorian of the school, uh, it wasn't just about doing good and getting good grades and doing honors classes and this and that. It was about, I mean, there was like a game to it, right? And you had to, you, you, can, add, you can get extra quality points, quote unquote quality points by uh, taking classes during the summer. So I did a summer course. Was that for high school or college? That was high school, okay. yeah. Uh, and so there was a summer, I, I would take just summer programs at Northwestern University. I did one which was uh, Honors Advanced Creative Writing, uh, which was fraught with, it. that had all sorts of stories attached to it. That was a really fun summer. Um, but the other summer was, I did Honors uh, Physics, 
uh, even though I ended up taking physics in school, like regular high school too, but it was more quality points and this and that. Um, and there was this girl who I had a big crush on who was older than me, um, as, you know, and so I, here, here I am, young nerdy Matt Pat wanted to impress this girl, and she had an intervention with me too, where, I mean, she, she did the like, hey, you're cute and sweet and awesome, but here's, and she had, and she had a boyfriend, right, so like, I, I wasn't like aiming for anything to come of it or whatever, um, feds pale, uh, but it was just, she was a girl that I, like, really looked up to. I thought she was, like, super cool. Um, and I'm like, ooh, I, I want to impress her, right? My young, what was it, sophomore, junior, no, junior year, sophomore year, Matt Pat wanted to impress her. And back then, I had this whole, like, kick about, I'm not going to really, like, shave the peach fuzz off my face, and I'm not going to, like, pluck the unibrow, because that is, that's how I look, and this is, you know, I'm beautiful just the way I am. Yeah. And... She had that intervention too with me, where she's like, "Hey, you are a, 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 you are awesome. Like you are a, a great person, but so you know, like you would be even cuter uh, if you if you, you know, or like if you presented yourself a little bit better, kind of thing, right? And did, yeah. did like some natural hygiene, and that was another one of those moments for me, where there was another like moment of revelation of like, oh, you know, just because." And, 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 and again, that was one of those moments where it's like, am I, am I selling out? Like, do I need to care about the opinions of others and this and that? And that was another, like, tough grappling with myself moment. But it's like, no, like, you know, and, and to some extent, like, the world operates off of, hey, you have to present yourself to others in a, in a way that's, like, societally acceptable or whatever. Yeah. Um, and at the end of the day, like you know, she, she like helped me shave the unibrow and this and that or whatever. And like, I saw myself in the mirror. I'm like, Oh, I feel so much more better about myself and confident in this and that, that it didn't. And it, and it didn't change who I was. I'm like, Oh, I, I look better. I feel better about myself. Other people are going to, to see me in a more positive light. And this is great. So like, I don't know. There's, there's been a couple of those moments, right. Where there's been those kind of hard lessons, um, that I've just kind of, you know, where people have, have stepped into my life and kind of been like, hey, you're, you're doing great, but have you considered this? And it, it's hard, but I think being open to their advice has, has paid off a lot for me and has, has largely been really beneficial. You, you grew up in an era without Instagram. Right? Yes, I did. 100%. That must be uh, so nice. Well, it, it's interesting. So, like, I, I went, I, you know, we went to the gym with Ollie the other day to take him swimming. And it was wild to me to see the gym was offering, like, back-to-school facials. Yeah. And I'm like, what? Yeah. Th that idea of, like, everyone always had their, like, back-to-school clothes, right? Like, everyone wants to wear their, like, nice outfit or new clothes or whatever for, for back-to-school. But the idea of a back-to-school, like, facial. Yeah. And the, the level of scrutiny that I guess, you know kids are under nowadays oh, or it's crazy that's that's why i mean because i you said that story and it was crazy to me because because of like social media i mean yeah i was probably 14 when i got on instagram uh-huh so i've just like always been aware of the way that i present because yeah. like i was forced to think about the way that i present Constantly. so young yeah. yeah that's really interesting yeah that was never and, and I, I who knows like you know other kids you know, that, that's just one of those things about being a kid, right? It's like, you know, you're trying to impress others or you're trying to... Ooh, this is satisfying. Holy cow. Holy cow. Um, so maybe I was just this, like, weird oddball who, as an only child or something, I didn't recognize that this was something I needed to be concerned about and I was kind of a late bloomer to it or whatever. Um, but yeah, that I, I think you're totally right. The fact that Instagram is now omnipresent and that you know the social media apps and stuff like that are are this constant thing you know selfies are like back in the day right like you weren't yeah. taking pictures of yourself all the time right like or if you were it was getting it was going down to the old photo mat and getting them printed out right you weren't posting them on display for like a bunch of people and anonymous individuals yeah to, to weigh in on right and so there was an element of things being much simpler mm. um i do think that there are a lot of ways that 
sort of being forced to have an identity online younger yeah. is also good. Oh yeah, I mean, it's it's like everything. It's a double-edged yeah. sword, right? I'm sure there's good and bad to yeah. it. Because it gives kids especially like a place to figure out who they are outside of their immediate yeah like community because yeah. a lot of the time the community that you're in doesn't align with who you really are mm -hmm. so like having that space in those places is really helpful sure. but also then you have to of course be cognizant of the way that you talk and act and speak and so right on and so it's, forth. it is it's it's it is that double-edged sword of on one hand it's good to kind of be able to exist in this like this innocence of sorts of not ha you know not having to worry or think about what other people are, you know, are how they're treating you or whatever, how they view you. But at yeah. the same time, that's just the way the world works. And so getting exposed to it and practice in honing it early is really important. Mm -hmm. um, you know, on one hand, I, I look at a lot of people online and, you know, you can tell that they're like very actively like building their brand and they're like curating their brand for the public eye and this and that. And, and on one hand, it's like, oh, that that sucks that that's a thing that people have to do. But on the other hand, it's like, well, but that's just a thing that you have to do. Like, welcome to the real world. Yeah. So it's it's tough. It's 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 a tough kind of middle ground, I guess, to strike or whatever. It's a good thing we've got Power Wash Simulator to talk about it. Yeah. That's well, true. to take our mind off. Oh, of to it. take our no. That's yeah. that's very true. Doghouse roof. Why am I missing the doghouse? Why am I missing on this doghouse roof? Oh my gosh, there's so much to clean on this one. Um. Doghouse roof, you are not glowing yellow at all. Doghouse roof, where are you? Oh, there. Oh, a little spot right there at the corner. Sorry, doghouse roof has become my new my new arch nemesis. Yeah, there it is. Doghouse roof got dunked on. Ooh, oh my gosh, there's so much. Um, it's also one of those. So, it's funny talking about all these kind of like life interventions, right? Did you, so I, real quick, before I get to my next one, I'm curious, did you ever have a moment like that where someone's like, hey, you know? Uh, I, I learned probably too recently that I, uh, I didn't know where my waist was on my body. Really? I, yeah, I wore my pants way lower than they should have been. Interesting. Because no one told me. Sure, right. Uh, yeah. Well, and that's, a, it, that's one of those classics, you don't know what you don't know. Mm -hmm. you, you don't know what you don't know, Yeah, I right? guess when I was like six and learning how to put on pants, I just decided where my waist was. Right. And wore them like that my whole life until someone was like, why? What? Pull them up. And I was <laughs> like... Uh huh? Maybe you were just sagging and bagging, man. I well, the thing is, I probably learned how to put on pants when sagging was cool. I was gonna say because yeah, yeah sagging it's it's hand in hand, right? Because you again, like you were learning all those important things back in, like you said, the early two thousands or whatever. Yeah, where it's that you're right, sagging was the very cool thing to do. Um, very familiar with that, and again, that goes to kind of like that era where I wasn't really wearing a lot of jeans or anything no jeans actually zero yeah I'm not a lot of jeans zero zero is not a lot thank you very much matt um that's really how did how did you come across like were you in a did someone tell you or oh yeah no literally i was like like i tucked my shirt in and uh -huh. someone was like why are your pants there over there and i was like well that's my waist and yeah because i had always assumed that my hip bones were my waist yeah so i wore my pants around my hip bones yeah uh-huh not your waist yeah not your, your waist, waist yep. is far above that yeah um that's that's the only intervention that comes to mind that's interesting was it a friend or family member it was a friend don't mind me asking yeah yeah and i i think like that's that's the thing right and i think that's an important one for for friends in general right is like those conversations are really hard to have and they might they're pretty awkward but the the value sometimes that it brings to people, oh yeah, is is tremendous, right? Like it makes such a big difference. Yeah, you gotta have your mean friend, R right? It's and it's it's easy to you know kind of want to be like the yes man friend and the yeah. the feel good friend or yeah. whatever. But sometimes the most valuable friends are the people who are the ones who can kind of have those awkward conversations or kind of be, aren't afraid to get real with you. Do you, you know? have a, do you have a mean friend? That would, that would require me to have friends at this point, Matt. Um, I, can, I can do it. Yeah, you, are you going to be my mean friend? I can friend? be your mean friend. Okay, great. What, what are you going to tell me? What are you going to tell me, mean friend? Uh, well, you missed a couple spots. I did. You're yeah. right. I definitely missed a couple spots. I missed quite a few spots. It, down here, actually, it's incredibly hard to tell like what is and isn't. Ooh, yeah. ooh that is garbage. No, I cherish. I cherish my mean friends. Right. Obviously, they're not mean to me. But they tell it tells it. They, like the, it the, it's not mean, yeah. right? It's the it's the real friends, mm -hmm. you know. The mm -hmm. tell you like it is friends. Yeah. 
which which you know is an important role. Oh yeah, let me get the, let me get the front of this end cap there. This retaining wall cap is 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 killing me right now. Ooh, oh look at this! Look at the level of detail we can get here. Oh, just I am l literally. If you imagine my character right now and what I'm doing, I'm literally laying on the ground. You're like soaking wet. Like, oh, just <laughs> I, I will back. say when I was doing this uh, last summer. I was totally soaking wet the entire time. By by the end of it, I was so soaking wet. But it felt. Good. But again, it feels good because you know, you're out there and it's hot out, and so you're like, oh, this is not only feeling productive but also like super refreshing. It's just satisfying across the board, you know. I should buy a power washer. I don't think I have much to power wash. I was gonna say it's one of those. I could find something. Yeah. You want to? You want to? You, you can borrow mine. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Cool. The the. Do you think we could have? Power washer fight, bad idea. No, that is not, that would not be wise. I would advise you against it. Hey, you know what? I, I'm a firm believer in learning through natural consequences, though. So, hey, yeah, if Like, you, would it hurt that? Yeah, it would hurt that bad. It, 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 it depends take, on, again, it depends on the nozzle, right? Okay. It depends on your nozzle, but I would say that probably, probably not the best. Honestly, probably not the best. Is a power washer essentially a hose? Or is it its own thing? Like, do you plug it into, like, the spout where... <laughs> The hose goes? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you plug it. The hose provides you with the water. Okay. And then the, the you know, there's a, it's an engine. It's a, it's a motor, right? That pressurizes the water. Okay. Um, and then you have it running either off of gas or off of, um, oh, come on. You have it running off of either, where is, I see it glowing there and I'm spraying right there and it doesn't seem to be doing it in here. There it is. See? Yellow, man. Yellow is the optimum nozzle. See, this, everyone's asking me for power wash lore. Guys, what you should be asking me for is power wash optimization tactics. That, my friends, is the, the true, the true. Is this like grime? Like mold? What? How is it so dirty? On, on here? Yeah. You know, on the lawnmower, that's a good question. Maybe it's a bunch of just lawnmower, like, remnant or, like, lawn. Because lawn, the lawn's dirty, right? You know, and so it's it's running around. It's probably got some caked on. Oh my gosh, look at how yellow it all is. This is going to take like a, a decade and a half, Matt. Well, maybe that's why we needed cleaning solution. Maybe the soaps would have come in handy. I guess. But also then you're rushing. Then you're rushing the job, Matt. <laughs> so on one hand, I'm like, this is amazing. On the other hand, I'm like, shoot, I've got a lot of stuff to do today. And I don't know if I have time to power. This is, this is my current dilemma right now of... Power washing my lawn again, or power washing the yard again, is like, man, I've got a lot of stuff to do. Last summer, you know, everyone was indoors, there were no meetings, there was nothing going on because, you know, everyone was trapped indoors for a pandemic, so I could just spend all day, you know, working and then hopping into my power wash bliss. But now, now that the world is opening back up and things are getting back to normal or whatever, now I've just got to, like... There's no time for the important things in life, like power washing. Oh, I gotta get down here. I gotta get all this. Oh, look at that. So one of my all-time favorite games and game experiences was Super Mario Sunshine for exactly this reason. Yeah, this is essentially like grown-up sunshine. This is. This is, this is grown-up Super Mario Sunshine, and it's amazing, and I love it. What do you think? Is this nozzle doing well on these steps or no? Like, yeah, I think so. Is it though? Yeah, you got more surface area. I, I got more surface area, but I got less pressure, Matt. See, it's, it's, it's the give and take of surface area to pressure. It does seem like it's getting a little bit more. Have you done anything summery this summer? This summer hasn't felt like a summer to me. No, this summer has not felt like a summer. I would agree. For what I, I, and I don't exactly know why. Is it because, what is it? I, on one part, I, I do know why. It's because we've been really busy. Like, mm -hmm. you know, we haven't had a whole lot of help with Ollie. And so Steph and I have been doing a lot of like trade off of Ali duty. So Steph and I actually haven't seen each other a whole heck of a lot this summer, which is a bummer. And also it kind of having a kid limits you to what you can, you know, what, what you can do in the time that you have to do things. Um, I think that's been kind of one of the big, the big tricks for us this summer. But what about you? You're, you're young, <laughs> Matt. You don't have, you, you don't have life commitments, do you? Yeah. Um, I we're going to a, a minor league baseball game. That's, oh that's yes, I want to do that so badly with Ollie. I want to. I, you, that's one of those things I'm really eager to see. Oh, this, this they're so much garbage. fun. I went to them all the time when I was little. Uh huh. Um, 
and hack if you get there early and you're a child and you're really cute you can sign up for like the halftime games oh uh, those that, are fun that's pretty awesome yeah the halftime games yeah you are can you win like little little bags of uh goodies and stupid treats. little yeah stupid you well they're precious. they're like sponsored by like landscaping companies so well, it's sure, like a true, a mug. true green it's like a mug true. with like a landscaping logo on it <laughs> those john deere mugs man those are those are <laughs> worth their weight in gold when you're a kid especially if you have the pride of winning it yeah that's true i that's mean the, you get to you stand on the field and like the people watch you while you like catch like uh, stuffed animals in your pants from from across the field or whatever. I want to catch stuffed animals in my pants. You do. You would kids. do excellent, right? I, I've got I've got big pants. They've got pleats. Those plant, <laughs> pants have got pleats, which means they got room to grow, my friend. They they are roomy as all get out. When Steph introduced me to the world of pants without pleats, I'm like, no way. I didn't realize that pants didn't need all this fabric right at my crotch area. Right. Like I don't know who invented pleats. Or why they invented yeah, pleats? Yeah, I don't get it. Like, what was the impetus there? Because the amount of fabric and bulge that it creates in your, like... Oh, maybe I've answered my own question at this point. <laughs> it was the bulge all along. That's something to uh, put on put on the front cover of a, of a Dockers commercial. Do it for the bulge. <gasps> but, uh... Shoot, there was one other... I, I always wondered how kids got down there. So you found this... Uh, did your parents teach you that secret or what? Yeah, a family friend. Uh, they had, like, season passes, and they would do it every time. Real, yeah. Every time? Yeah, because I'm, like... Man, you ruined it for tell the rest you of us no, You're a they're... cute little child. Sure. Yeah. Wow. How did you... Did you win anything? A, a mug with a landscape. So, <laughs> wait, so you actually did what? Like, what, yeah, what did no, you have yeah. to do? Did you actually have to shove? I had to catch bugs in my pants. Y you really did? Yeah, they would that give you, a... like, an extra large, or, like, an pair. oversized pair of baseball pants, uh -huh. and you would, like, stand in the middle of the field. Yeah. They'd have, like, a t-shirt gun, and they'd, like, throw little stuffed animals at you, and you'd catch them in your pants. Really? They caught, like, X amount. You got, like, a little box with, like, a, like, hat for the team. And, really? And various lawn care merchandise oh sure lawn care merch that's, yeah. that's important sure totally wow that's amazing yeah i i also played baseball as a kid so it was like really cool yeah so like oh and you catch foul ball no, oh yeah but no being a, no being on the field is yeah. so cool mm -hmm. Ooh, do i like bikes i could do with someone running their thing over my dead my deadbeat dirt bike dirt bike would be fun yeah i liked it I like the small projects. The small projects give me a lot of... Oh, Florine and I would climb up and down that rock garden all day pretending we were on a rumbling Mount Rushless and the pond was the crater. Cool. It's kind of a lot of information. Right, for, for someone, someone... who's just cleaning your back deck. Yeah, right, for someone who you literally hired on. Yeah, are you strangers? Certainly. I have no idea how we explain the fish being there. I, I do love when people overshare like that. That's one of my... One of the things I miss about working customer service. Really? Yeah. Our oversharers love when people come in and have a bad day, and they would just tell you every single detail. Really? Yeah. And and because I know like people do that with bartenders all the time, mm -hmm. and bartenders, the stereotype at least is that bartenders absolutely hate it, right? Well, yeah. Well, I feel like that happens a lot more to bartenders than like a sixteen-year-old like waiters. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, Fair enough. Uh huh. Um, or just like. I don't know. People will just tell you whatever you want to know, really. Right. Oh, and your coworkers. Oversharing with your coworkers is one of the small joys of customer service. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Is that true? Oh. Because I, because I, here's the thing. Like I've had very. I don't think I've ever really truly had a traditional job. I like. I did theater. I worked in. I, I, I did work in an office. Like when I quit theater and before I did started doing YouTube full time. Yeah. But I never had that real joy of. Yeah. You know, maybe for a year or two. Oh, some when I was like sixteen to to now. Yeah. Some of my best friends were like my forty-five year old coworkers. Really? Yeah. Oh, that's great. Yeah. And they would just talk, and I would just listen. Uh huh. Yeah. Any any good stories come um, to mind? A lot of like sad ones. <laughs> great. <laughs> really uh -huh. sad stories. Oh no. <laughs> that's not good. Um. But learned a lot. Definitely learned a lot. Yeah, did did you become jaded before your time because oh, of absolutely. all the because of all the stories yeah. that the forty five year old were saying? I was eighteen, turning fifty. <laughs> uh, that's that's really funny. You know, thinking of um, the intervention stuff, one of the other things that comes to mind is uh, 
I think there was kind of like a third intervention. And I've mentioned it briefly on the channel here before. But so I was doing theater, right? Talking about like the weird, weird jobs and kind of the stories that come with weird jobs. Um, and there was this one guy who I guess like my mom or a casting director or whatever, like had put me in contact with and it's like, send him your like audition stuff, right? Send him your resume, send him your headshots, send him your like videos. And, and so I did, I'm like, oh man, this guy's going to get me in. And I think he worked for like a couple of, of, um, cruise ships and back in, in theater, if you don't know, cruise ships are kind of like the, they're, they're the, the primo job, right? You're not doing something that's necessarily like super creatively satisfying, but you do a lot of performance. You bank all the money that you make because you're on a ship and it's all kind of paid for. Your food's paid for and the food is good because you're on a ship. Um, you know, it's kind of like a free vacation because you're on the ship. Like it's, it's kind of like one of the, the best jobs in, in theater and especially like if you're a musical theater person. Um, but anyway, so I'm like, oh, this guy is going to be you know, my, my, this is one of my, this is my big break or whatever. Um, and so I send him the stuff and he comes back with this like incredibly rude, I, I, what I thought of at the time, right? This incredibly rude and like hurtful note about like basically how terrible I was. Um, and about how I didn't know, how I didn't understand my brand, right? Like I have no idea who you are and how I can use you and, and what you can do. And I, I forget how he phrased it. Like it was, it was pretty harsh. Um, and at the time I, I had, you know, I had no idea what he meant. Uh, I'm like, what's he talking about? Like, look, listen to me sing. Like I'm singing really well in the song. Uh, you know, here's my little acting bit. Look at me. I'm totally fine. Look at my headshot. Like I'm, I'm portraying myself in this really good way, whatever. Um, my resume makes total sense. Look at all my roles and this and that. And I realized now knowing what I do and kind of going through, you know, being a YouTuber and all the learnings of the last whatever years, um, I, I, I get what he meant now, right? Where like, I look back at my headshot at the time, my audition portfolio at the time, and I wasn't telling them who I was. You know, I wasn't telling them my brand. I was like, Here's a list of everything that I can do. Here's a bunch of like mishmashed songs that aren't sure. Like, you know, I'm the ingenue. I'm the weird character actor. What I, like I was aiming for ever. Like I wasn't pigeonholing myself into one thing, which sadly is kind of like how a lot of these industries operate or kind of what you kind of have to do. Yeah. Um, another kind of big rev revelation moment was Steph when we were both looking for a job and I was transitioning out of theater and this and that read a lot of career blogs and the one blog is like number one rule of your resume is don't put everything on your resume yeah and you know that's that's a weird concept but you know what it does and what what that means and I think this is one of those lessons that a lot of people might not know or might not realize is you know your resume is crafting your story, right? And if you put everything on your resume from your weight job to your, you know, to your PA career, to the, the like freelancing you did at like Party Central or whatever, you know, it, it tells a confused story. It doesn't show like a career path. And the things that people are looking for or the things that really stand out when you're, you know, a hiring manager or whatever is what is the story of this person's career? Like, what is their trajectory? How have they been focused in that direction? And, you know, what skills do they have? How can I apply them? And, and where are they headed to next? And that idea of, you know, s selectively curating my life and almost typecasting myself or like pitching myself for the, the role I was going for was, was a huge revelatory moment. Because again, it was like something I had never thought of. It was not something that anyone had ever trained me for. Um, it's just really interesting that, uh, who knows, maybe, maybe again, like I was last, last to know, uh, which could very well be the case, just like with my clothes, right? Maybe I was the last to find that one out, but that was, that was another one of those big revelatory moments. Yeah. You got to manage your brand. Yeah, no, right. Exactly. Which goes back to kind of what we were talking about before with like the Instagram stuff right. where, Hey, you know, Oh, look at that patio's done. It's great. That's a huge one. 
Um, but yeah, you got to manage the brand, right? And, and again, that was not something that I ever thought about, considered, what have you. Uh, and so it's that double-edged sword of it's good that people are thinking about this stuff now, but also you have to start it so young. Doc yeah. Bob Park. And yeah, you have to start it so young and also, you know, it, everything now has intentionality. Mm-hmm. Whereas before it was just like, I'm doing theater because I like theater. Or I'm doing, you know, this sport because I like this sport. Or I'm dancing or whatever. But now everything is like, what is the intention to get into college? And how are you going to get into college? And make sure that it's for your resume. And make sure you're getting oh, subscribers yeah. or mm-hmm. followers onto your Instagram for yep. whatever. Or it's like you're you're picking up hobbies because you like the way that it makes you look. Rather well, than it's something that you are genuinely interested in. Right. Which is, How do you feel about this? So, I'm, so Matt, what, did you grow up in that era? Or like... Tell me about it, because oh, yeah, obviously I, was, I grew I was, up kind of innocent of that. I was hyper online. Yeah. Yeah, very online. Um, I don't know. I think there were a lot of things that it did that uh, were bad. But also, uh, I'm able to function in the year 2021 in a way that I think benefits me because of the amount of time that I had spent online yeah. in my, like, teen uh-huh. years. Yeah. Um, yeah, I was going to say, so, like, do you think other people your age get it? Like, or are you, how how would you rate your savviness relative to other people? Um, I'm curious. It depends. I think I'm at a point with, with my, like, behavior online uh-huh. to where I understand that it's, like, not real. Like, <laughs> wait I, a minute. Are you lying? Are you lying to me online now? What's what's going on? No, here? it's just like I don't know. I think that there's a propensity for for people my age and a little older. I think the younger kids have figured it out. But like, nothing online is genuine. Yeah. Like really. I right. mean, uh, as far as social media goes, you can't be an honest, genuine version of yourself on Instagram.com. Like what? it's just not. I love that you define it as Instagram.com. <laughs> I mean, it's a website. It is like, right. Uh huh. Um, and so I think that like the Gen Z kids got it, like yeah. they're sort of past that, but it's, uh, people that are like a little older than me, yeah. and, like in between you and me yeah. where they haven't quite figured that out. Yeah. Um, so like, as I get older, I use the internet less and less, or I use it in a way that is less and less, uh, honest, not honest, but I guess fulfilling. Like yeah. I understand that there's no real, like genuine fulfillment that you can find in, in an Instagram or a Twitter profile. Yeah. Like, uh-huh. I'm just gonna say my stupid little poopy jokes, like, on Twitter, <laughs> and then log off. Uh-huh. Uh, so I think I'm savvy in that way. Yeah. But there are people that are way savvier than I am. Like... Oh, sure. Right. Navigating TikTok is a frontier that I am afraid to face. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the algorithm is supposed to give you everything you want anyway, right? Well, I'll sit there and I'll scroll, but, like... If you ask me to use any of the effects on TikTok, uh-huh. I'm lost. Oh, man. is that I'm going to have to put you on that task, aren't I? So we, we can, I guess I will have to figure we, out how to I was going to say so we can learn together. Yeah. Yeah. All the filters and things. We're, we're going we're gonna to duet together, you and I. Would you say that you're hyper online? No, actually. I mean, well, am I myself? Like, I consume online, right? Like, I, yeah. think, I think that's definitely something that I do. Um, I'm an online consumer, right? I, I love... I love YouTube and I love all the content that's made from a lot of independent creators. Um, in fact, that's some of my favorite stuff, right? I love watching small independent creators doing their top 10 lists or, you know, Sophia Nygaard doing her makeup stuff or, you know, uh, Matt Stoney doing his competitive eating. Um, I love that. So on that front, but when it comes to like Twitter and stuff, yeah, there's a reason why I've I don't appear on Twitter as much anymore. There's a reason why I don't appear on Instagram as much anymore. It's because it, it, it did, it lost a lot of the enjoyment or fulfillment of it or like it, it, yeah, it's, it's one of those things where like I'll engage when I feel like I either have something to say or there's something I do have to say, like for like a brand deal or whatever. Um, or I'm just excited to share something. And, and the thing is, I wish I could share more. Honestly, but exactly to your point, I think like, I, I don't, maybe, maybe if I was not an quote unquote online influencer or someone who has to preserve a brand or like, I would enjoy it more. Right. Yeah. But I think the fact that anything I do online 
to some extent has to be an extension of a brand. Yeah. You know, and this is this is like me doing this is very honest, right? And I think all of our content that we do is very honest. But when it comes to like smiling for pictures and stuff and taking Instagram beautiful shots, like that is not who I am. And yeah. I, I don't think... actively take pictures in my day to day. I take pictures of Ollie. Yeah. I take pictures of me. Do I look great in all of them? No. Do I look Instagram ready in all of them? No, certainly not. And do I want the internet picking them apart and, you know, critiquing me for it? No, I don't. You know, I'm, I'm happy with the pictures that I take. I don't really want to put them on public display in a lot of cases because, you know, those pictures are for me. Yeah. I think earlier when I said that there there is no genuine content online, I meant specifically with, like, social media. Yeah. Like, I think it's it's really, really, really hard to present a genuine and honest version of yourself sure. on, on Twitter and Instagram and TikTok, right. et cetera. Well, and also, I mean, and also there's always a constant, like, things getting misconstrued, taken out of context, yeah. which is always really bad. And and I do think that there was an era early on, and especially, like, Twitter, right, where people were honest, were less, were, were more carefree with what they put up. And, you know, you see that coming in recent years or whatever, coming back to, like, bite them, right? Because I think, like, a lot of times... They were, you know, making jokes or doing things that were not okay or maybe were okay back then or whatever. But, like, they, there, was, there was never this acknowledgement. And I, I always kind of had it in the back of my head that, like, hey, things you put online exist online and they are, it's a public forum. And we talked to people who are on our team were like, hey, you need to supervise what you're putting out online. But I think a lot of people came into that world being like, I could put up whatever and it doesn't matter and this and that. It's like, no. Like, you have to be careful with, yeah. with that online portfolio. Oh, definitely. Yeah. I mean, it, it's forever. Right, exactly. It's forever. Hey, we're at 50% of this, this garden. Yeah, I don't think we're going to make yeah, it. Yeah, I don't think we're going to make it, Matt. We've been talking for a long time, and we've talked about a lot of things, and it's been great. But also, I recognize that we've been talking for a long time, <laughs> and I've got scripts to write. And I'm going to, to Vegas later this week, so, which means I have a lot of scripts to record before I t hop on a bunch of planes. Are you a Vegas man? What? Are you a Vegas man? Uh, I like Vegas a lot. Really? But I not for the reasons people like Vegas. Yeah. I like Vegas for the shows. Okay. I like Vegas for the buffets. Yeah. I like Vegas for the people watching. I don't Ooh. drink. I don't club. Okay. I don't, you know, I don't gamble. Yeah. I don't do any of that. So, like, I, you know, uh, I'm an educational drinker. So, like, if there's an interesting drink, I will, like, and it's, and it's free, I will try it. So I can educate myself about it um, or uh, just like to, to teach myself about like wine tasting or whatever. Um, gambling stresses me out to no end because I don't, there is no fun in the prospect of like throwing away money on a dice roll. Yeah, that makes sense. That I just can't, I cannot grapple with that, especially coming from my upbringing. And then when it comes to, you know, the partying and stuff, like I would like to dance at clubs, but exactly that, I would like to dance at clubs, mm -hmm. you know clubs themselves are so you know crowded and dirty and hot and unpleasant that it's just not fun right so or at least i struggle to have fun with it in the way that i would perceive so i, I love vegas i think the buffets are great uh you know buffet optimization is a, a passion of mine i think the shows are phenomenal i think vegas has some of the best performances um but yeah when it comes to when it comes to liking, so I'm not, I am a Vegas person without being a traditional Vegas person. I love walking around the strip. I love walking through the hotels. I think it's, it's fascinating. It's endlessly fascinating to me, but yeah. One of those. Why? What about you, man? Have, you been, have you been to Vegas? No, I've never been. I think it would be uncanny. Like, I, it I, is. It would be, uh, like, one step away from psychosis, it feels like. Ha! Huh! Just like. The inside. Step away from psychosis. Yeah, they don't. Vegas. They don't have clocks on the walls of casinos. No, right. Yeah, uh -huh. and like uh, there are entire insides that are outsides. Uh huh. Right. And there are outsides that are insides. insides. It's, it's it's pretty wacky. It's, yeah. It's a place unlike any other. That's not true. It's uh, what is it? Dubai. Dubai is a lot like a bigger Vegas with more stuff. Um, where you can do even like Vegas brands itself is the place where you can get away and do anything. Uh, Dubai is like that, and then some. Where it's even more of you can do anything and get anything you want, um, which is why I also really enjoyed Dubai, because um, it also had that kind of like it's like Disneyland for adults. Like, and I think that's the way I kind of look at 
Disneyland or Vegas is like it's like Disneyland for adults. You have all these thematic places. I'm I'm hanging out in a pyramid right now. I'm hanging out in a, you know Excalibur Castle right now or whatever, and that's that's wacky and fun. Um, so I always appreciated that. But uh, but yeah, it's one of those things. I really want to finish this trellis wall, which is what I'm aiming for. And also, if I could finish this retaining wall cap, that'd be cool too, because this was one of the jobs that I kind of like had started. And if I can get through these two, I will be satisfied with my progress for the day. I'm hopeful that it saves my progress and that I can just like come back to this as opposed to quitting out and then all of a sudden we have to like restart this this clean, which would be a bit of a bummer. Uh, where are we at? Get that retaining wall cap. Get that retaining wall cap. Yeah, there it is. And then let's leave this trellis here. Um, maybe if the bigger one will help. Just calm it down a little bit. But, uh, but yeah, so Vegas, huh? Well, if we do a 10 million subscriber party for film theory, we'll have to make sure that you're, you're invited out to the, the, the Vegas celebration. Yeah. Uh-huh. That would be great. Because we did do that for, uh, Game Theory hitting 10 oh, really? million subscribers. Yeah, we brought everyone out to, we brought the whole team out to, as many people as who can make it to celebrate. Whoa. Which was a lot of fun. I and would we love did, to go to Vegas. Yeah, we did an escape room, we did a buffet, uh, we did a show. And then at what everyone else did. Well, what was the I, show? I don't want to know. Um, or do you have plans to see a show when you go up this time? I wish. Uh, I would have. But actually, our schedule is pretty packed. Um, in a, in a you know, cool turn of events, the, the brand has actually planned a lot of stuff for us, which is really exciting. But also, it means that it's going to be hard to squeeze in, like, the Omega Mart visit that I, you know, want to do both for personal reasons and for work. Um, cause we gotta do the Omega Mark Theory Part 2. Um, it's also one of those things where, uh, you know, I, I really want to squeeze in a trip to the Bacchanal Buffet, which is, uh, Caesar's Palace Buffet, and is, after much testing, Steph and I's favorite buffet. Um, all of that good stuff. So, anyway, whoo, man, that's a lot of cleaning to do. And that was a lot of story time. I hope it wasn't horrendously boring for everyone listening and us rambling. This was really cathartic. I love this game. It's no wonder Markiplier has played like eight, eight uh, parts of it. It's also no wonder why he cuts it down to like a 30 minute video as opposed to whatever this is going to end up being, which is what, like an hour? Uh, yeah. And you know, we didn't even get through like, we got through one and a half of the projects. My gosh, look at it all. Look at what we have wrought. Anyway, um, yeah, so that's, there you go. That's a little bit about me. It's, I think, I feel like this is like podcast of the game where it's, I feel like what those commentary channels, um, what was it? Leafy back in the day, but nowadays there's still those commentary channels who just kind of like do challenge modes of Minecraft or, you know, CSGO challenge maps or whatever, and just do it on loop over and over again while you just talk about whatever the drama is or whatever comes to mind. That's, that's what Power Wash Simulator is for the rest of us, so... There you go, friends. Power Wash Simulator, really fun. My jeans story, the like four major interventions in my life. And uh, yeah, who, who knows? If, if you like this one, let us know. I'll do it. I'd love to do it again. Uh, next time, maybe we could talk about the theory of the seven most influential people in your life, which uh, is, I think, a fascinating thing and is an interesting conversation topic for an extended play game like this. So let us know down in the comments below. Did you like it? Would you like to see more? Um, and if, you know, if not, I'll just play it in my own time for free. Uh, but otherwise, thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video. I'll see you on the other side of Vegas, actually. Uh, I'll be probably writing the Power Wash script on the, on the plane. But, um, thank you guys. This wasn't a live stream, but it was a video, a video for you. See you in the next one. Bye!